Let's look at this new Apple M1 MacBook Air in the gold color today. Hi, this is David of Tech for Baba, a channel I share my experiences on how technology enhances my time with kids and family as a dad. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please consider subscribing. In today's video, I'll start with a clip unboxing the new gold MacBook Air from two weeks ago and then share my thoughts after using it for two weeks. To let you know my conclusion first, I think this is the best laptop to get for most people these days. Instead of going over the specs, I'll focus more on what it's like to actually use this MacBook Air for a couple of weeks. I did a video earlier about my thoughts on the specs of all the new M1 Macs, which I'll link here and below in the descriptions. Okay, let's open this up. I was apprehensive about the gold color. Personally, I don't like the bright yellow gold color, but this gold is nice. It has a darker shade to it under certain lights. It even has a rose gold-like warm to it. Looks quite elegant. I've always liked ultra-thin notebooks. The whole point of having laptop is they are light and portable. I still remember my excitement when I watched Steve Jobs pull the first MacBook Air out of the envelope over 12 years ago. This is it. Let me take it out here. This is the new MacBook Air, and you can get a feel for how thin it is. Yeah, there it is. Look at this. I was hooked and was fortunate enough to get the first gen MacBook Air, which I still have here today. Sure, it wasn't the most powerful laptop at the time, but it was just so sleek and thin. Over the years, I switched over to MacBook Pros since the Pro became not that much bigger or heavier than the Air, but much more powerful. Well, that's no longer the case today. With the switch over from Intel to Apple's own M1 chip this year, both the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air have the same very fast Apple M1 chip inside. The Air is now just about as fast as the Pro. Its case tapers thinner towards the front, which makes typing a bit more comfortable with less of an edge. It's a bit lighter. What's really amazing is the Air no longer has a fan. A powerful laptop with no fans. What a concept. If you've been using Intel laptops, whether PCs or MacBooks like me, we've all learned somehow to tune out these loud laptop fans. On my 16-inch MacBook Pro, the fan kicks in loudly as soon as I open up a few Chrome pages, start a Zoom call, watch 4K YouTube videos, or import some photos from my SD card, let alone more intensive workloads such as photo exporting or video editing. Worse yet, it gets burning hot so quickly that I just can't use it on my lap. Yep, a laptop that I can use on my lap. There were no better alternatives until now. Using the M1 MacBook Air is an entirely new and different experience. It's a powerful computer that stays cool and is completely silent all the time. To me, this is the most amazing feature of the MacBook Air. Not only is it silent and cool, the M1 MacBook Air is fast. The snappiness is felt the moment I lift up the lid. It turns on immediately without any lag at all. Really, I try to see if I can see the initial black screen that I'm so used to, but I just can't see it. It seems like it's just always on like the iPhones or iPads. The snappiness feels like an iOS device as well, except it's a computer-like operating system. Opening up native apps is fast, Moving, switching between Windows and apps are almost instantaneous. Web browsing is such a pleasure, especially with Safari. Websites opens up quickly, scrolls effortlessly. Even Google Chrome, now that it's been ported to M1 properly, opens and loads up web pages without lags that I'm used to with Intel-based computers. YouTube videos play smoothly even with all the other tabs and apps open. Final Cut Pro runs very smoothly with 4K videos as well. Editing, playing back, exporting, all felt quick and effortless. Yes, even with tens of web pages still opened up in Safari and Chrome in the background. And this base MacBook Air only has 8 gigabytes of memory. The M1 chip is so fast, even apps that have not been ported to the M1 chip, like Spotify, Adobe Lightroom, Microsoft Office, run smoothly, and some even faster than on Intel-based Macs through an emulator or a translator called Rosetta 2, which is for the most part transparent to the users, except for a delay first time the app is open. These M1 Macs can also run iOS apps if the developers choose to allow it, like Mahjong, 
among us and let's also start monument two for kicks you can even play them all together at the same time I have to say quite strange to see these iOS apps and games running on a laptop in addition to staying cool and silent without a fan I also haven't seen the beach ball much and the battery lasts much longer than any laptop I've used when I have it charged up overnight I have not needed to charge it during the day if I only use it for five, six hours that day, I can go without charging for a couple of days. Usually you would have to trade things off. If you want the computer to be fast, it'll run hot and it'll use up a lot of battery. If you want the battery to last for a long time, the computer would need to run slower. But this M1 MacBook Air improves on them all. It has no fan, not much heat, and it runs faster and the battery lasts longer. Okay, using the new M1 MacBook Air is very refreshing. But there are just a couple of things I so wish Apple updated, but they didn't. First is the outdated 720p webcam. It's so old that even though Apple tried to improve it with software, it's still very grainy and just sad, especially in low light. The other is not as bad, and I just wish that if they're gonna just have two USB-C ports, it'd be great to have one on each side instead. Another thing to note is the current state of the software. We're still early in Apple's transition to its own M1 silicon hardware. A lot of software work still needs to be done to translate, enable, optimize the third-party software for this new, fast, and very efficient hardware. It'll be even better, but it'll just take some time. In my earlier video on the new M1 Max, I suggested going with this base MacBook Air for most people, and maybe the 16GB MacBook Pro if you want more headroom. Now that I have some time with the MacBook Air and seen all the reviews, I'm more sure about the MacBook Air. I think it's the best new computer this year, or even the last few years. It's an ultra-thin laptop under $1,000 that's faster than most PCs, big or small, with integrated graphics. So far, I can't get this MacBook Air to struggle much, even with heavy photo editing and exporting or 4K 10-bit 422 video rendering, unless I'm exporting a very complicated long video over 30 minutes. Now, for $300 more, you can get the MacBook Pro with a little brighter screen, a little better mics and speakers, a fan to run the most stressful apps longer if needed, and an extra GPU core to speed up GPU intensive games or apps a bit. But the difference is no longer that much. If I can spend more, I'd rather upgrade to a 16 gigabyte MacBook Air for $200 more than an 8 gigabyte MacBook Pro for $300 more. I'll try to get my hands on a 16 gigabyte MacBook Pro for comparison, so subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified when that video comes out. In summary, Using the new M1 MacBook Air has been a brand new computing experience for me. It's really a game changer in laptop computing. It's so impressive what a well-coordinated tech company can do when it can develop both the software and hardware together. It gets my heart pumping looking forward to even more powerful M1 or M2 chip-based laptops and desktops to arrive in a few months. Of course, better tech will always come and we can keep on waiting. And for hardcore gamers who won't be looking at a Mac yet anyway, the latest dedicated graphic chips on NVIDIA and AMD are still miles ahead of these M1's integrated GPUs. But if you need a day-to-day -day laptop now, this new M1 MacBook Air is such a huge leap in performance and efficiency. It's the one to get now. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, please smash the like button and share this video with others. I'd love to know which M1 Mac you're considering, if at all, in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos on how technology can enhance our life with kids and family, please subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified when I put out my next video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, cherish each moment.